Hey, it's Happy Stony Sunday, episode 252. It's been a bit of technical difficulties so far. I am live streaming on Periscope as well as YouTube. So it's double the technical difficulties, but double the stoniness as well. I am at the glass shop, the Poindextorium, where Nerd Glass, Navi Glass, sometimes Destruct, sometimes other artists too, come through and work. And today, I get the opportunity to show you guys around, talk about glass, tell you how I started, when I started, what I like about glass, and also get super, super stony. I am smoking some organic cannabis from Kraft. I really don't remember the specific strain, but I love the stuff that I took home from them. Okay, so I think that there is a way that we can get the chat going and I can actually move to the other side of the computer. Oh, pause that, okay, okay. Thanks for joining. This is like maybe the most technical difficulties we've made it through. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna take the bomb. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna show Jess what's going on. There's this page. I'm gonna lower it down so it's easier to click. Bam, this page and that page. Questions and no questions. And then we're going this way. Woo! So I'm gonna repeat myself quite a bit. Thank you. We need a little switcheroo there. <laughs> I'm gonna repeat myself for sure of what I was just saying on Periscope. But today I want to work with the opals that I encased in the last couple of days. I have four opals here, and the weirdest part is I actually encased five, but mysteriously one vanished. <laughs> We've looked everywhere. Like, I've looked everywhere, seeing if it fell off somewhere or dropped or broke, and I just cannot find it. So I have a star over here, but it does have some air pockets all around the points. My first time working with a star. And then these three rounds, and there is some, like, kiln dust on it, so... Even if they're sparkly now, hopefully they'll get even more sparkly as I use them. Here is for Periscope, in case you guys missed it. Oh, so we gotta get working. We gotta get going. I wanted to take a dab, of course, absolutely necessary. And then continue telling you, I started at Revere Glass. Justin Revere was absolutely generous. I was there as a guest visiting a friend, and Justin offered me torch time. He let me practice, like just melting a rod and doing marias. And I was going back like once a week as best I could. Um, as I started traveling more and more, different seasons change, I ended up going like only once or twice a month and it was so frustrating to not be able to go more often. But as I'm traveling, I also get to meet other glass artists. So I've had the opportunity to work in different glass shops in California, in Boston, wherever I want to go, it feels like. I love it. Oh, cheers. <coughs> oh my god. My language tastes like wine. <coughs> really juicy. <coughs> I was making, like I said, like little Maria's on rods and kind of dabbers and pokey things. But eventually I started doing hollow work, like pipes. And pipes were a huge challenge for me. I made probably just over a dozen or so, maybe around 20 pipes. <coughs> oh my goodness. I know Jess has one of my pipes for sure. I have one still on my like TV box top. <laughs> and then I raffled or uh, auctioned them off and then also given them away in free giveaways like randomly. I know I did it at Santa Cruz at least once. And someone from the East Bay won. It was so weird. I was in Santa Cruz doing giveaways when the East Bay was like, hey, I got this. Like, did you follow me here though? Like, how did this happen? <coughs> 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 I'm not trying to make you safety. Anyways, I did not have an anti-shoelace in a glass shop that was like asking for trouble. Oh my gosh. Pipes, I did produce like a good amount, but I wasn't very good at them and they weren't really like 
something I wanted to make a bunch of. Like I kept trying on it just because that was the next step in what I was doing. And I was like wanting to get better. But it wasn't necessarily like, oh, I love mini pipes. I want to make every friend I have, I want them to have a pipe that I need. It was, I don't know, it just didn't really catch the feels like that at all. <coughs> <coughs> this is why it's awesome to have an assistant around. So amazing. Um, I went to Boston last September, and it is in fact September now, and I will be in Boston again in like three weeks, really, really soon. So while I was in Boston last year, I met Shop at Glass, and Christian showed me how to make a glass fish. So I don't have the first fish here with me, unfortunately. It's at my house. So if you may have seen on Periscope on live house tours in the past. Can we hand you the black case for you guys? Come on over with that camera. Because I wanted to show you guys the fish that I have right now on hand. These are going to Aqualab Technologies, most of them. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little progress shot. This one is even a standing fish. Bam! And that is the first type of fish that Christian showed me how to make, the standing variety. But my fish actually had ridiculous fins and wouldn't stand up all the way. So he ended up making a base for it and putting a little starfish on the bottom to like help that out. And yeah, from that one fish that I made in the very beginning, I found the fields for glass. I fell in love with the whole craft and wanting to just try again and again and try harder and do something different. And if I felt like I did a good job that time, well then try and do it again, you know? Because everything feels like a fluke when you're working with glass. And I just feel like there's so much practice to be had. It instantly reminded me a lot of yoga because I get so frustrated with not being able to complete what was in my mind, but so inspired to come back and give it more of my time. I really liked the balance. I really liked what it was bringing into my life. So I've been making fish for about a year now, and today I'm gonna make fish with you guys, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these opals into the kiln. We're gonna get the kiln turned on. I'm gonna show you guys how I turn on the gas, and we're gonna do a little, little torch time here on Stony Sunday. Take my drink with me. I'm going this way. And then I have the behind camera facing. So I'm just trying to keep Jess off camera so she can be my stealthy assistant. Stealthy assistant. <coughs> we got Nerd Glass doing something. Hi. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Okay, so I flip this switch down here. Wait, I'm going to set this here. There's a hole there. Da da da. Okay, so you flip the switch down here, turn it on. Nerd probably programmed this whole kiln to be magic and do things that I don't understand. But it turns on, and then I just want to put my opals in here. Do you want your little Millie in here? Yeah. Okay. So I'm putting my opals in here so that they can warm up evenly and slowly, rather than if I just threw them into the flame on the torch. They could crack hot, broken glass and fly at my legs. It would be chaos. It'd be horrible. Okay. So then we're going to move outside where we're turning on the gas. Dun, dun, dun. It's hella bright out here, you guys. It's actually like a really nice day. Okay, so what I do here, I've only done a couple of times and with Nerd's help, so he's probably watching that. I'm gonna twist this one. And like more twists than I think, but like that's probably good. Yeah, okay, then I'm gonna come over to here and I'm gonna twist this one. Uh, the same way, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, I did it. Magic has happened. So let me go back inside. We got the gas is on, the kiln's on, and I don't work in here, but this is the other artist's little area. Messy. Messy little area. And then into the other room. I think that's all we have to do in here. Kiln on. We're like a little camera train right now. We got assistant with a Sony Sunday shirt carrying the camera. Being awesome. I'll get this set up over here. I'm going to get into some torch timing, guys. 
What time is it? Oh, 12, 18. Perfect. We'll probably go for about 15 or 20 minutes. I haven't even answered a single question because I'm just talking to you guys. But questions. So we have like the least q and A I've ever, I've ever queued in A. We're going to do some glass, you guys. It's going to be glorious. And I'm going to take a color suggestion. So if you see a color suggestion pop up, let's take it from YouTube. Let me know. I've got red, blue, green, pink, yellow, kind of, uh, purple. Blue. Got blue? Mm -hmm. People like blue. You can do it. Oh, the fans. Nerd Glass has casually kicked on the fans. It's in my meat. It's important for you to glass blow. Because you need ventilation, right? Or you'll die? Yeah, you He just saved my life, you guys. All of our lives. Not you guys, but like the rest of us. Thank you. We're live. We're picking. We're gonna do a blue fish. I think I'm gonna do. This is a amber, blue, amber, purple. You guys see? It's how it's blue and then changes is different than this cobalt, where it is just solid one color. It doesn't change even the heat at the tip of the glass. But that amber, blue, purple goes more mixed around somehow. Blue, amber, purple. That actually, oh, a striking color and changes, oh, it changes in the heat. And I think it's a really fun one to use when you are going to be making the bodies because it gives them little swirls and different impressions of color and cool stuff. So I'm going to make the body on that blue, amber, purple, and then the fins will be cobalt. And that also works because I have less blue, amber, purple, and more cobalt. Now we have to get out. <laughs> Okay, I can yell. The fans are really loud, but then, like I said, really important. Oh, well, could we smoke more? Mm, yes, thank you. Let's do it. We'll smoke and melt. It'll be glorious. So, because this is a shorter rod, I'm going to attach it to a little empty here. I'm not ready to go. Thank you. Like I just to brown, the lighter out of the way. Awesome. Thank you. <coughs> 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 If you guys are watching on YouTube and you haven't seen me melting glass before, I'm super followed. It's been quite a few months since I put a video up with glass melting, but I have been live streaming on Periscope probably like every other time I have the opportunity to work the porch. So it's really fun to be able to talk to people while I'm doing it because I have to keep my eyes down otherwise. But I wanted to attach a clear rod to that blue amber purple so that I can work with it a little easier and get my fingers all right up in the flame. But at the same time, I just made the tip of that very, very hot, so I'm going to want to make sure that I don't get my hands too close. I know one question that everyone asks all the time is, how do you burn yourself, or do you burn yourself, or what happens when you burn yourself? Uh, it hurts. I definitely burn myself. I want my finger really, really close to the flame, which is still enough to make it, like, blister up. Ross has burned himself pretty badly as well. Not super badly, but I remember. That was the worst, you think? Oh, the cuts. He says the cuts are worse than the burn. So that is something I'm not going to wait to actually have not really experienced because of glass yet. And it makes me super, super nervous and really uncomfortable. Thanks for bringing that up. It's alright. Oh, now I'm so nervous. <laughs> but yeah, hot stuff is like one of those natural things, you know. So I have a stony Sunday question. <laughs> Not quite to do with glass. Okay, yeah. But I think you'll like it. <laughs> Coral, do you have any advice on how to vote for Responsible Ohio's legalization plan? Should sick people still demand all or nothing or just take it as better than nothing? 
And then some pieces better than nothing is definitely appropriate. And I, I'm really, I can't say don't vote for it and not mention Prop 19 in California. Because a lot of people, I feel like, had the same feelings about Prop 19. We're like, oh, it's not exactly what we want, so we're not going to vote for it. And that was a mistake in California. The responsible Ohio measure is not Prop 19. It's not the same at all. It's completely different. It's a monopoly for the rich that want to get involved in cannabis. And I, I really, really want people to actually like read the measure itself and understand if that's something they support. Yeah, I, I try not to get in the position of telling you guys what to vote like explicitly, but I think if you guys read through that one, you will see that it's not fair access for people that want to grow it. It's not fair access to all patients and the way they want to distribute it. It's not really legalization for people. It's a monopoly for the rich. So it's a shame that it like got this far without people really seeing more truth about it. But I don't know, it's a, it's a tough time to be in. I guess if, if you think that this is like the only chance your state's gonna get, that's the mistake. You guys can always come back next year stronger. I just retweeted something earlier today that was from Florida, a petition to legalize, and I, Hear the fierce attitudes from Florida way too often. I was super encouraged to see another petition come forward. More efforts being made because you gotta legalize it. Every state, every time, everywhere, every country. It's just ridiculous how much permission we have to ask to just have access to the plan. So, I don't know. Responsible Ohio, I don't exactly think it's the right way to go, but I think that there there is value to really better than nothing idea, but I don't think that applies. Is that fair? Can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, but no. Yes. <laughs> I think it is therapeutic melting glass. I have a question in from the periscope. Perfect. By the way, I made a switch and then I made a rod attached to the switch. Um, Christian probably taught me much more formal language. He is super experienced with the chocolate glass out in Boston, but I prefer to think of the switches. Switches would seem to be. So now I'm going to add the second thing on. And that body is the blue and the purple, so it's striking up some cool colors and greens and swirl. And then the fins, I'm going to just break, not break, but like last melt away. I'm going to make squishes. Squishes are soon to be squishes. I think glass is therapeutic, just like I was saying, in the same sense that yoga is. It's a frustration that draws me back to the activity every time because I feel proud of myself for what I accomplished last time, but also like motivated, like, oh man, that was not what I wanted to do. Like, I know I can do way better. Just give me another talk, give me another hour or two, and I can do way better. So it's, it's a really nice thing to add to my life. That being said, it's not a cheap art to get into. It's not something that you can pick up super, super easily if you don't already have friends that are doing it, know someone with a glass studio, that type of thing. And when I asked Nabby Glass how he started melting, he said his roommate bought a torch. That roommate was Nerd Glass. So I worked at Nerd Studio. Like, a lot of what happens in the glass community is collaborative, and that's not just in the that's also in the workshops and the workspace. And I think if you're just starting out by yourself in the middle of nowhere, it's super, super hard. You may have to be that person to buy the torch and make the investment and build a little shop. It's a lot. It's a lot to do. So I'm super glad the Bay Area is like super rich with uh, glass artists. Probably Oregon may have more, but you probably good enough. I'm making my fins. It's crazy how fluid glass becomes, but if you heat it unevenly or something, it, it'll just fuck that shit up. It's kind of weird that something that frustrates me is something that I find very therapeutic, but too many things in life are rewarding very easily, or you can almost buy your way into being rewarded. And you cannot buy your way into rewarding with glass. Like you can buy all the fancy stuff, 
looking at the names of Splash Off, it's not with all the high tech stuff, but if you're not putting in the time and actually doing something with the box and you're making it work, investing like the time and energy into it, you're not going nowhere. You'll just start renting out for a time. When I go to Boston in a couple of weeks, I will hopefully be doing another YouTube video while I'm out there. Actually, with the man who taught me to make a fish. So, we hopefully be able to do some labs, make some more fish. The YouTube video is going to have some closer shots on Periscope. So, if you guys are watching on Periscope, you should know this has been getting the camera up in here. It's an HD footage of fish action. You guys may want to go check that out. And also, I want to point out, I'm actually touching the joint where I welded that earlier and still got up. And it's not hot to touch anymore. So, it is, you know, crazy hot when you're working with the glass, but it does cool down rather quickly. Why it can lead to cracking and being destroyed to do that type of thing. What I'm going to do is get the back thing on in a way that I like, then pull them to be beautiful little things, put the side thing on, and then the opal eye. Maybe we'll do a loop, maybe not, we'll see. See how it feels, you guys. Maybe like Bob Ross, we can make a little fish. I was throwing it out with some cool, funky flannel, denim, with it. I guess YouTube gets the HD footage, but Periscope sometimes gets Britney Spears jam sessions where we blast 90s pop and we melt glass. So that's a huge advantage, I think, from Periscope, though. But it's not HD. My old neighbor used to look so much like Bob Ross, and then water his lawn for so long that I was like, this man is Bob Ross. It wasn't though. Anyone was curious. So what I did is I added some texture to the uh, with these little tweezers, and it took me a while to find the tweezers that I wanted for this project, because the ones I had before were very wide, and they created a very wide imprint on the glass, and I didn't like it. So at DFO in June, uh, Ross took me to his favorite tool maker guy, and I just described what I wanted, and then he didn't even Malcolm. Malcolm just like found it, and I felt so. I'm like, I want small, pinchy, like thin, good, long, thin, little pinchy, pointy thing. And he just like sits there and stares at you, and then when you're done talking, which is whenever you want to be, he totally does not interrupt. It's just really weird. It's just like quiet. And then we'll just like dig through boxes, find you what you want, and be like, bam, here you go. This is it. And it's perfect. So I didn't believe Ross, but it worked. And then Ross just did it again recently with him. He like, described tooling needed, found the guy. The guy found it. So we've got one fin shaped, one fin. Now I'm working on fin number two. I never know really which is going to be the top fin or the bottom fin until I'm working the glass and I see how it looks on that particular fish. It should be some movie, you know. You never know how it is going to be. It's so expressive. Added texture to fish fin number two. You guys can see the difference between the cobalt and the blue amber purple. They look very similar, just in the raw, one's a little darker, one's a little lighter. But once you have the heat, and this is a more oxygenated flame, it just helps the color. Ah. I will be in Boston for the Freedom Rally, so there will be a meetup for the Freedom Rally. I had a meetup the last two years. This will be the third year. And of course, I love tradition like that. There are more YouTube traditions than my own family. It is so weird. YouTube is family. So. Yeah, I will be there year number three, maybe up by the statue where we were before, or maybe down on the grass, because that was just nice and fit. So maybe we'll start in one area and then move to the other. 
weather. Anything could happen, you guys. It could be crazy. But I'm really looking forward to it. I remember Beaumont's edibles in Boston. Did you, did you turn it on Safari and Rock Safari? It's like really cute world. Beaumont's edibles. They were so good. And I don't know, sometimes they get me the cookies and I'm like, yeah, thank you. Which one? Hand. Hand. <laughs> There's two old. Yeah, I never know about the edibles. But I tried this one sample from this girl and it was so good. I instantly went and found her and now and followed her back. Looked through all her pictures. All her pictures were bomb ass good pictures. So I don't know. I'm kind of hoping there's like good edibles yet. My stomach remembers more than my mind ever will. I swear. If I bomb somewhere and have good food, then if I'm going there again, I'll tell them like, there's food here. Someone had ball snacks. Where are they? Okay, side thing time. I wanted to make sure the fish was hot and the rod was hot because you want them to melt together and not just be one place off of the other. If you guys, like, if this is your first time watching HD or close up glass melting, I really suggest you check out Revere Glass's videos. He does an amazing job at getting beautiful shots.
So if you guys want to always check out or want to at some point check out Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, my email, all these other places. I'm going to judge them all over here. Uh, you can definitely hit me up any number of ways. And I can't always respond live. I do the best I can to catch questions. Though. This is a Q&A show. Favorite donuts, chocolate. Chocolate. Three more questions as I wrap up this fish. Here you guys can see his eyes and start to sparkle and shine. Um, so we do it. So now what I'm going to do is I, I'm, I'm going to put a leaf on this one. Yeah, I'll put a leaf on it. I'll take three more questions. Well, this one's my favorite kind of glass work to do. Um, I only really know how to do boral glass. They're boral silicate glass. They're soft glass. I'm sure there's glass types I haven't even heard of yet. But for the most part, I work with boral silicate, and I definitely prefer solid glass over hollow. I just haven't really like managed hollow very well. Here's the Amsterdam wheat question. So I find it just Um, was I disappointed with the wheat in Amsterdam? Totally, completely, thoroughly disappointed. In fact, the weed that they were bragging about in Amsterdam was imported from, Pol or from uh, Oregon. And it was like, you know what? Who's refunding my ticket? Because I could have just driven up to Oregon and gone bomb ass weed that all these Amsterdam people were bragging about. But to be honest, I didn't go there just for the cannabis. I went there for the cultural experience. It was the first time I had left the United States. So going somewhere where cannabis was super friendly was uh, like easier for me. It was very scary to leave the country for the first time. And a lot of people speak English in that country, in the Netherlands. It was a very nice place to go. You guys watched the video from there, you remember? There's a lot of cheese. I'm a big fan of cheese. There's a lot of bread. Oh, big, big, big fan of bread. So, let's see. I'm going to shape the loop. I'm going to bring it like right over here as I shape it. My parents can't see that. But it's crazy. I got these little pinchy tools, <laughs> and they help me shape that loop. Good. And then as it hardens, I want to just make sure that it keeps the space for the, for the necklace is going to go. And then I'm actually going to shape it much more than that. We're going to work this for a couple of minutes. So two more questions for that answer down one with the four my three. My honest opinion on Oregon weed, you guys, they were bragging about having it across the country or across the fucking world. All that stuff. They weren't wrong. They were not wrong to brag about it. I don't ever mean to be implying that like Oregon has weed that's not worth bragging about. It is worth bragging about for sure. But to fly all the way to Amsterdam and to hear me talk about that it's just the next state north, it's kind of like, it was, it was a trip. It was definitely a trip. The cheese was so worth it, though. What I saw it lacking in wheat, it made a foreign cheese. That's it. I'm getting rid of the meat on it. No cheese bag for my bread. Cheese and salami. Cheese out so. Okay, getting a loop to where I kind of like it. Then what I'm going to do is use this little tool, which is kind of like a cone shape. And rather than just opening up a hole, it's actually the right, really makes it more round, and circular. Yeah. And I want to make sure that it's kind of even on all sides. And then, I don't know, when there's more questions, here's some nerd on there. Mm -hmm. I think this is going a little long for a stony Sunday, but there's fish involved. I can't stop now, you guys. can't stop now. Oh, no, I was going to ask if there are questions on YouTube, but that's it. It's weird. Ooh, the sparkle on there is good. Pretty nice little sparkle. And now what I'm going to do is shape the mouth. So that's pretty much the last step for me. With the striking color fish, there's one additional step, which is to blast it with a more neutral flame and bring out some of the colors. So I might do that on the body for just a second. <laughs> okay, and then let's see, we got your tweezers. The 
It's weird. It's melting glass with no music or no movie on. Normally here at the Point of Storium, there's always something playing. And it's literally something that'll make you laugh. I don't know if it's funny or because it's ridiculous. It's like one or the other. And some of the music that's played is like, what is happening? And that includes pretty weird. I wonder what made this thing when there's like torches blaring and like just really serious lighting from the shop that day. Second, wait, what is happening? Great day. Okay, so I'm making a little gather and I'm going to poke it and I'm going to it out. And the trick is that I don't drop it, I'm going to it myself. It doesn't pop. I don't want to do that. So far, so good. Once I have him shaped up, I'll do that last little two Okay, he is where I want him to be. Little sparkly fish, his eyeball. Now that loop that I spent so much precious time crafting, I'm going to potentially destroy. I'm going to plenty up to it when I blast this fish in. I guess I say potentially destroy because I don't want to be too attached. If it happens to happen, ideally it doesn't happen. And at this point, I always feel like I'm going to do a fish barbecue. Because I feel like he's just on a stick. Like I'm going to go roast the fish marshmallow and see what happens. So now I'm going to just take him into the more neutral plane. And that might bring out some different shades in that blue, amber, purple that the more often made plane is kind of successful. Not too long, so I think that feels like just enough. And then break it off the plenty. Bam, just a little top and come right off that. Always a little scary. And then I want to just melt off any connection points to make sure that you can't tell that's where I come to this day. If you ever see like, that little flat plant on a black piece, or, or you just see like, where a little piece was attached and they broke it off and they didn't play college after. So I can do that. Okay, so this little guy is, let's see, get this one off, and then this one off. This one off. He's ready to go into the kill. I'm going to grab the longer scissors and let's do this. Okay. Okay. I put it in the back of the kiln so that other artists can put their stuff up front. And I have three more opals to make these up today. Let's go smoke a bowl and sign on out, you guys. Thanks for joining me for such a long, ridiculous Sunday Sunday. There were technical difficulties. There was chaos. Let's see, I'll go over here. We'll take it down if you want to come join us. This might work out okay. Well, we're in your So, if there are any last questions, the show typically is your first time watching Sony Sunday. Thanks for bearing with us. And wow. Uh, Sony Sunday is a question and answer show. It's sponsored by Voboda. They help me make the time to be able to do this every single week. And I have a really fun time doing it. So I think this is maybe the second or third time I've actually done the Sony Sunday from the glass shop. But I hope that you guys got some new info that you didn't see before. And maybe also thought of some new questions about glass. Because it's becoming more and more part of my life and I'm enjoying it and I love that it remains that it allows me to remain more independent. I can take on less sponsorships. I can push push t-shirts live and that type of thing because I can merchandise my own site with my own fish or whatever else I want to make. So I super super appreciate the support. It's amazing. Bringing Sony Sunday into this like glass world is really cool for me. And I'm glad that you guys gave me the opportunity. Oh yeah, I had a goodie bag here to show you guys. This is what you get if I use a pre-selected question. So go to stonysunday.com slash Sunday or Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, hashtag AskSonySunday. And there's uh, Bovina in there and Humboldt Humboldt. So cheers, you guys. Thank you for watching. The last question I'll answer is who am I going to collab with next? 
and it's a surprise. But I definitely love doing put a fish on a cloth. I have a lot more planned and ones I haven't even asked the other artists about yet. So no, I don't even know. They don't even know yet. Thanks for watching you guys and say hi.